Hey sports fans, I'm Coach Nick and welcome to Give and Go, a show where we'll break down what's happening both on and off the court in the crazy world of the NBA. Joining us as always are Larry Kuhn, writer for ESPN, HoopsWorld.com, and the author of the CBA FAQ, and Eric Pincus, senior writer at HoopsWorld.com. Uh, Larry, I want to throw it to you right off the bat. Can you give us a little state of the union of what's happening with the NBA and the owners and the players? Sure, Nick. Right now, the players have done what's called a disclaimer of interest. They've dissolved their union because the owners put out a proposal that they said was take it or leave it. You accept this proposal at 50% with these system changes, and if you don't, we're going to reset our offer back to 47% and... I think hard labor for life, something like that. So the the owners um, said they stopped negotiating. They said there has to come a time when you're done negotiating, and we are. So a pretty clear indication that they're at in take it or leave it mode. The players said we still can't live with that. They were they were they agreed at fifty percent on the split of the basketball related income, the BRI, but the owners were still holding to some system changes that the, the players considered to be a non-starter. So the, the players said, the owners are done negotiating, we're going to dissolve our union because what that does is a strategic move. It takes them out of the realm of labor law because the union protects them um, protects them from antitrust. Having a union, having collective bargaining means you're in labor law rather than antitrust law. You dissolve that union, you're out of labor law, now you're in antitrust law. So now uh, the players immediately file two lawsuits in antitrust, um, f federal antitrust court, against the owners claiming that the lockout is what's called an illegal group boycott and that a lot of the, the owners strategies are anti-competitive. So you know, we're in the first stages of that. Is this going to go all the way to litigation? Probably not, because that could take years and huge expenses. What the players are hoping to happen, their strategy, in fact, David Boyce did all but hand out a cell phone number at, in his press conference. He wants the owners to call him. He wants to negotiate. He and Jeffrey Kessler will do the negotiating. They hope to settle before having to even go to court, because that will possibly save the season if they can do it in time. Now, Eric, let me ask you this. That was pretty complicated, what you described, Larry. And I'm wondering if, Eric, do you have a sense of if the players truly understand exactly what this means? I, I don't think that everybody does. Obviously, uh, the rank and file guys, there's 400, 450 players. I'm not sure if you polled even 300 that they would fully understand the depth of what's happening. But the union leaders, uh, each team rep, uh, Derek Fisher, of course, the president of the union, union, all the people involved, they know what's going on. They have a plan. I'm not going to say that it's a good plan or the right plan, uh, but I respect that they stood up for what they believed in. They, they did not want to take uh, what they felt was a bad deal. They believed that by going to 50% uh, on basketball-related income that they would get the system that they wanted. Uh, and now the owners not only want the 50%, but they want uh, their way of doing business and and I understand it from the owner's side and that they want to have some level of parity and that's a good idea in theory uh, but the players thought on that is that if we're giving 50 50 then you have the income that you can now share your revenue sharing so why take it out of the players in their individual freedoms as free agents to get contracts because the way the system was uh, proposed by the by the owners uh, the players might not have the same kind of leverage they do now when it comes to getting a contract. Uh, now, obviously, if you ask David Stern, he'll give 10 reasons why that's not true. Uh, but he's not on the player's side, and the players have their beliefs. They stood up for it, made, a, made a, a stand instead of taking a bad deal. The question is, is, will they get a better deal by this delay? I don't know if they will. I, I think they will on some level. Uh, and the question is, is what they lose in year one, which is where we are right now. Uh, will their gains be through six, seven, eight, nine, ten years uh, of the next deal? Will that be enough to justify it? We'll have to wait and see on that. And I think the biggest mistake it seems like everyone agrees with is they should have done this July 1st to force the negotiation to go along at this pace. I think by doing it now, uh, this almost essentially torpedoes the whole season. Yes and no. I mean, it, it does 
present a much greater risk of us losing this season because there's so little time left. But there's a couple of points you have to remember. One is that they were trying to get this done through negotiation, and they really kept negotiating all the way to the point, you know, despite some players wanting to get rid of the union, despite the agents putting a lot of pressure, supposedly. They really kept negotiating until the point where the league said, we're done negotiating and we're going to give you a reset proposal. That's good for a couple of reasons. One, you know, hindsight's 2020, and if they had gotten this solved through negotiation, Billy Hunter's a genius. But number two, when they decertify the union, there's always a threat of being accused of doing what's called a sham decertification. You're not really dissolving the union. This is just a strategy in order to get a better deal. The union's still in charge. The court can rule it was a sham and say, no, get back to the table. By going until the league said that they were done negotiating and were about to put a reset proposal on the table, the players are in much better shape in fighting off any claim of it being a sham. Number three, it, you know, you're trying to do this in order to get the, the league to react to you because the players have been reacting to what the league has been doing for months now. By doing this at this late a date, you're really knocking the league back on the heels. They're going to lose a billion and a half dollars if there's no season. They don't want to lose a season either. So by doing this so close to a drop dead date, you're making them react to you. You're making them come back to you, hopefully, with a better proposal in order to save a season that they don't want to lose either.